rally, but those of you who were there, you know what happened. We heard the gospel preached, and it was not unrecognizable, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word of God. Father Ken was able to just let everyone know <laughs> he was using his analogies of, of picking one word from the reading and so on. And Alberto Salazar was there saying, you know, I run for God. I'm running for God, Jesus Christ. And he told his testimony, which we'll be able to hear later on this afternoon. Johan was there leading us in worship through music. And we concluded with adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament and a procession back to here. And I, I just want to tell you that it was, it was really just a great, great blessing. It was a great evening. And I want to thank those of you who encouraged the young people to come. Maybe you had to cajole and, and drag and kick and, and do whatever. Or maybe it didn't take much at all. Maybe they were dragging you. But I just want to thank anyone who helped facilitate those young people coming. And I want to mention now that the Center for Peace West has a new office in Beaverton. If you don't already know it, it just opened. And they're always looking for help, volunteer help. So if you feel called to do that, please go to the... There is also a Center for Peace West table here at the conference. So make sure you stop by there and, and see what they have available. They also have tapes and, and books that you may check out as a lending library situation. Um, so go ahead and stop by and see what, how the Lord and Our Lady might be calling you to get involved there. So their new office is in Beaverton. A thing that we want to say to all, all of us have a responsibility to evangelize. This is the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Now, that is not an option. Evangelization is not just a call for a select few. Evangelization is for you and me on the Mondays and Tuesdays of life, at the Texaco station, at Safeway, in our neighborhoods, to our next door neighbors. I just want to say that the, the Lord will give you the words to speak if you're, if you're afraid that maybe you're not going to have what it takes to evangelize. And by the way, your life itself, we want to remind you, is that. A little side note. My neighbors who live across the street uh, were here last night. Are you guys here today? Mark and Karen, are you here? I don't see them. They, they're not Catholic. But ever since we moved in, they said, we've been praying for a, Catholic, or, or a Christian couple to move in. We moved in a couple months ago. And they've been asking about, now, now, tell me about the Immaculate Conception. And so we begin to share a little bit. Now, tell me about eschatology in the Catholic Church. See, this guy went, went to a Protestant Bible college. And so we've been dialoguing. Well, last night they came. They prayed their first rosary. They were invested in the scapular. <laughs> and so, hey, I guess... I guess it all started when they were coming over to visit one day, and we have a holy water font by our front door. And on their way out, uh, Vicky just, you know, my wife just blessed herself. We are, when I, every time we go by, we're blessing ourselves. Say, hey, we can never get enough. But anyway, she just kind of took someone and went like this to them. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, oh, what's that? She said, well, that's our holy water font. And they said, well, can we? Well, sure, sure, heck yeah. And, and uh, the, you know, Karen, you know, dipped her hand in and... The husband said, now, I know how to do it. Okay, now, the Eastern Church does it this way. And he knew. And I couldn't believe it. He goes, yes, I'm a closet papist. And he, and he was sharing things with me. We didn't say anything. We were just living there. So I just want to say, just be who you are. And you never know who's going to be showing up your door saying, can you tell me about the rosary? Can you tell me about the Immaculate Conception? So be ready. And know that the Lord will give you everything that you have to say. That universal call to evangelization, that apostolic, not option in, ter in terms of being a Catholic. So I just want to share that with you. Adoration will continue on all through the day. I want to make a point to, it will, it will continue on during lunchtime, okay? So our adoration chapel will be available. And we're going to hear right now from Father Ken, and then Father Peter Mary Rookie will, will uh, close our morning. And those youth, young people who were not able to receive a blessing from P Father Peter Mary... We'll be able to, after the Angelus at noon, we're going to ask you if you'd like to come up and, and you, you can receive a, a quick blessing from Father Peter. We weren't able to do that last night. He wasn't over there. So that will be made available to you. Also, we're going to draw for the winner uh, for the youth uh, young adult trip to Medjugorje. 
So that will be at noon. I want to make another announcement to let you know that tomorrow at noon there will be a Mass at the Grotto. Father Peter Mary will be there. And at 3 o'clock, right in town square, at the Pioneer Square, a rosary will be prayed. And if you're, if you're available at 3, or even if you're not able to go there, uh, keep that in mind as, as you pray. So I'd like to ask Father Ken to come on up. Father Ken Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't record this, but somebody picks up my program in the priest room. Now, I know all programs are the same, but in the back of mine I have some French material. So I need the French material back. So whoever picked up my program with the facts in it at the back, I'd like to get it back. <laughs> that was a quick. Um, first of all, again, I'd like to say how much I appreciated last night. And I'm not, I wouldn't say this just to, because I'm here. The, the, the young people that were here last night were one of the best groups I've had in the whole world at Dingham. Uh, and that was the reason we had the Youth 2000 in London, and 1,000 teenagers uh, spent all night in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. So that was number one. Number one group with a whole 1,000 young people, teenagers, spending all night long in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. That was a highlight. So number two is the group... <laughs> Number two were the teenagers from Portland last night, so they're number two. <laughs> Let's start with a prayer of to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those of you that are fortunate enough to get EWTN know that Mother Angelica repeats all her programs. You know, whatever series is on, it's usually on three or four times a week, the same program. Let's see, fill up time. So if you watch it on Monday, it'll probably be repeated on Wednesday at a different time, and again on Thursday at a different time, and again on Sunday. So if you watch EWTN all the time, you're going to see the same show four times. <laughs> Even Mother Angelica lies repeated. The Mass is on four times a day. The same Mass, right? But then when she's run through the series, she starts all over again, showing the same series four times a week, right? And so I remember one time, I had a series called Fit Beliefs and Practices. And I think they ran that through ten times. Four times a week. And one lady who'd been watching EWN for a long time and said, Father, you know, I've been watching you on Mother Angelica and you're beginning to repeat yourself. <laughs> it took her four years to realize they would repeat. <laughs> and I feel like that at Medjugorje conferences. You know, when you come, how many new things can you say about the Blessed Mother? And so if some of you have heard me before, I'm bound to repeat some of the things I say because the same truths apply, even though I may give it a different slant. And I like to pick a single word for those of you that are getting this tape that's being recorded. I'm calling this talk The Woman. So if you're putting on the label on the tape, label it The Woman. And I got that from today's Mass. Remember I said pick a word every day? What was the word yesterday? March was a witness. That was yesterday. Today, I heard the word woman in both the readings. I hope you did. In the first reading from Genesis, the third chapter, 15th verse, I will put enmity between you and the... between your seed and hers. And the gospel was Jesus on the cross. Woman, there is your son. So... The, the common word today is about not just a woman, but the woman. And of course, your, your, your theme, Mary, this woman, is Mary, 
co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. But what I want to say before we, I want to build sort of bit some foundation here. One of the problems that I see with Marian conferences so often is that all we hear is Mary, 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 Mary. And if any non-Catholics are there, they're going to say, you see, I knew those Catholics didn't know Jesus. <laughs> see, we must have balance. And as I travel around the world today and see different places in different cities and different countries, you know, it used to be at one time, it was enough to say you were Catholic. Because Catholic meant we all believe the same thing, whether you were from England or Ireland or Germany or Poland or Czechoslovakia or the United States or Mexico. Every Catholic all over the world believed exactly the same, didn't we? And then all of a sudden, and when, in those days, remember, we, it was us against them. Them was anybody who wasn't Catholic. And us was us, right? And we only prayed with us and we didn't pray with them. Remember those days? Well, Vatican II came along and it said, you know, them are our brothers and sisters. So we've got to love them. So we called that ecumenism and we started loving them and hating us. <laughs> because we were a different kind of us. See, it wasn't enough to be Catholic anymore. You had to have a hyphen. Are you a charismatic Catholic or a traditional Catholic? Are you a Marian Catholic or a liberal Catholic? Or, you know, there's all these different words. People want to know, say, you, well, what kind of Catholic are you? you even with priests now, right? It used to be you were a priest. Now he's a liberal priest or he's a conservative priest. He's a post-Vatican II priest or he's a pre-Vatican I priest. You know, we've got to have that kind of, and it's the same with nuns and sisters. It used to be you were a sister, you were a nun, you were religious. Oh, but she's very conservative. Oh, he, she's very liberal. She's off the wall. <laughs> and now Mother Angelica's got him on the floor. <laughs> if you don't watch Mother Angelica, you don't know the joke on that. <laughs> but you see, Catholic means all-embracing. Just because we are Catholic doesn't mean we all have to pray the same way or have the same spirituality. After all, the Dominican spirituality is different from a Franciscan spirituality. Always was. Jesuit spirituality is different from Benedictine spirituality. That's why some people became Benedictines, some became Jesuits, some became Dominicans, some became Franciscans. Because it was a different spirituality. You know, I, one time I gave nuns retreats. I don't do as many as I need more today because they don't want priests to do it. Some of them may want other nuns to do it now. <laughs> but <clears throat> when I used to give nuns retreats, I was with a bunch of Franciscans in Chicago, the Felician nuns. I was trained by the Jesuits, so my spirituality is Ignatian. So here I am giving the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius to a bunch of Franciscans. And the Mother Superior said, Father, you know we are Franciscan, not Jesuits. So I said, what's the difference? And she gave me the omnibus of St. Francis. <laughs> And I saw there was a big difference in spirituality. But Franciscans and Dominicans and Jesuits and Benedictines were all Catholic priests and brothers and sisters. But a different spirituality. And yet we accepted that before Vatican II. Now if we have a different spirituality, it seems to build a wall. and becomes elitist. And so what I want to do is not build walls, but build bridges. There's too many wall builders putting walls, oh, we're inside, we're the true faith, we've got it all together, let's build a wall, keep all those heretics out. Well, let's knock down the walls and build some bridges. And let's start with the Blessed Mother. See, Mary is probably the most difficult thing for people to understand outside the church. It used to be that Catholics accepted her, now even Catholics have a problem with it. You found that out in your parishes, I'm sure. Especially when you want to pray the rosary or have Marian devotions. See, even priests, some priests are out of it now. You know, I always laugh about that because when I work with teenagers, the most common word I hear from young people is the word boring. 
See, there's two groups I work with. I work with teenagers and priests. And you know the most common word I hear from my brother priests? I'm not into that. I bet every one of your pastors has said that to you. Whatever that happened to be. You know, if you want to have a charismatic prayer group, I'm not into that. If you want to have a rosary, I'm not into that. May procession, I'm not into that. See, that's what we're, uh, most priests can't go one week without saying that once. Whatever that happens to be. And when I talk to my brother priest, I say, we can't be into everything. But we must be open to everything. The one thing that most people are not into, not just non-Catholics, but many Catholics now, is Mary. First of all, it was, a, it was a kind of false ecumenism. And so, what I'd like to do in this particular talk is help you be a bridge builder with those who don't understand Mary. Don't be a wall builder. Because even some of you are building walls because of your wrong attitude to Mary. And that keeps people out. So we're going to be talking to non-Catholics Make sure you know the Bible. Because if it's not in the Bible, they won't believe it. It's no good telling them some encyclical or some council. They're not interested. Show them where it is in the scriptures. Show them a Bible passage. And then you'll open them up. They may not be into it, but they'll be open. So make sure you know the Bible. I remember several years ago, I was going to... Um, the on the 700 Club up in Virginia and uh, North, with, with uh, Ben Kunschlau. And I remember they took me to the airport, and from the airport to the stage station, and I was sitting in the green room waiting for, to go on the air. And Ben came in and he said, Now, Brother Roberts, he wouldn't call me father. <laughs> he said, Brother Roberts, he said, please don't say anything Catholic on this program. I said, you mean I can't speak about Jesus? He said, no, I mean Mary. I said, well, I wasn't going to talk about it, but since you brought it up. <laughs> I said, what's your problem? And then he told me that they had one mediator, one mediator with the Father. That's the Son. It's in the Bible. It's definitely in the Bible. Paul to Timothy, there is one mediator with the Father. That is the Son. There is no other mediator but Jesus Christ. That's scripture. And what's all this about media tricks? So I didn't ask, uh, media tricks is the feminine of mediator. See, a man is a mediator, a woman's a media tricks. <laughs> so, what's this about Mary being someone who mediates? If the Bible says only Jesus does, right? So I let it slide, and I'm on the air, I'm going on the air, and at the end of the show, I don't know if you ever watched the 700 Club. They pray over the petitions. Now, I am perfectly well aware of what they were doing. I'd watched the show many times. But I played dumb. So at the end, he said, Brother Roberts, will you place your hands on the petitions and pray over them, please? I said, what petitions? He said, Th these petitions here. I said, where do they come from? He said, our viewers write in their prayer requests. I said, and they want me to pray over them. They said, yes. I said, why didn't they go straight to Jesus? <laughs> so you see, I was being a mediator, wasn't I? With the Son. Not with the Father, with Jesus. I was going with their prayer request, praying in Jesus' name, who is the mediator, but I was mediating with Christ. And if there were any women who were praying with us there, they were mediatrix, weren't they? <laughs> I said, couldn't Mary do what we just did? <laughs> you mean to say we've got more power with Christ than his mother? See, it's a question of understand, misunderstanding words and terminology. I don't know how many of you have read the book Playboy the Priest, but there's a character in the book, my Uncle John. He wasn't Catholic, and he lived with us these latter days. And, of course, he wasn't used to Catholic terminology, and we weren't used to Protestant. I remember one day he'd gone to a revival, which we call a mission, 
And he came back and he told my mother, he said, Mick, he called her Mick. He said, I went to church tonight and committed all my sins. And we were little kids at the time and we said, Uncle John, you don't commit sins in church. You confess sin. He's now in the Protestant church, we commit sins. <laughs> so when a Catholic says, I commit sin, that means he sinned. When a Protestant says it, it means he got rid of it. <laughs> See, it's a question of terminology. Make sure we understand each other's terms. Otherwise, you're going over each other's heads and underneath. So let's start with rock bottom about the Blessed Mother. What do I find the most powerful, powerful argument to convince a non-Catholic Christian or even a Catholic Christian who's not into Mary to be open to the possibility of Mary's role? And that is the woman in Genesis. The woman in Genesis, Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers. Now, in the Douay Reims version, it says, you shall, she shall crush your head with the snake. In the King James version, it said, he will crush your head. And now the New American Bible does too. But in the Ecumenical Bible, it says they will crush your head. <laughs> so you take your pick on that. I don't want to worry about, who, don't get scared of arguing about who's crushing heads. Even the church accepts that that's Christ. At the conception. And says so somebody might ask you, well, I think it was Kevin. So I want to talk about that, because that's one of the doctrines of Mary. Probably the most difficult doctrine to, under, to explain. I've never heard any Catholic explain it properly. Maybe it's because you don't understand it properly. I'd even heard sermons that didn't explain it properly. And so if they didn't, how can the Catholics understand? And if Catholics don't understand what it is, how can you explain it to non-Catholics? I was at a workshop several years ago at a Protestant university, and I was representing the Catholic Church. And they had ministers of every denomination, Baptist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Disciple of Christ, Assembly of God, uh, Episcopal, Orthodox, and all the different brands. We're all around on a panel in a big auditorium, and we were spending three days in workshops trying to show what we shared. And on the first day, it was all about God the Father, and everybody agreed. There was no division. Everybody agreed on God the Father. Like, we're all worthy one on that. When we talk about Jesus Christ, true God, true man, second person of the Trinity, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Alpha the Omega, we all agreed. We had no problems about Jesus. Then we started on the church, and that's when we all started getting into little walls then. But then they all ganged up on me, on Mary. I had no allies out there. And one of them said, you know, he said, it's amazing how much we agree upon, but surely you cannot defend the Immaculate Conception from the Bible. And the problem was because they couldn't find the words Immaculate Conception in the Bible. They said, show me, where are the words Immaculate Conception in the Bible? I said, they're not there. I said, you admit that the words Immaculate Conception are not in the Bible, and yet you believe in it. I said, do you believe in the Trinity? Does everybody here believe in the Trinity? And they said, yes. I said, anybody on this table that does not believe in the Trinity? And they all believed in the Trinity. There was no Jehovah Witness there. And I said, then, where is that word in the Bible? It was like scowls came from their eyes. Did all of you know the word Trinity is not in the Bible? Look from cover to cover, see if you can find the word. Start at the beginning of the Bible and go to the end and see if you can find the word Trinity in the Bible. But you won't find it there. But every Protestant believes in the Trinity. So I said, how come you believe in the Trinity if you can't find the word there? They said, well, the word's not there, but the truth of the Trinity is there. I said, exactly. And the church discovered that truth when she preached on it in the council and then named it. But if you'd have gone up to St. Peter and said, oh, where's the Trinity? They probably wouldn't know what you were talking about. It wasn't defined yet. The word Trinity was not defined at the time of the apostles. 
go back to the first century, to the early Christians, and say, now what do you know about the Trinity? They say, what are you talking about? Because they hadn't got to that point yet in the history of the church where they had discovered that revelation that was revealed in Scripture. What is the doctrine of the Trinity? That God is one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That they're not three gods, but one. Three persons in one God. So tr that was defined by a council of the church. Much later than, than the Bible was written. And that's why we all believe in the Trinity. But the word Trinity wasn't in the Bible. In fact, the word Bible is not in the Bible, is it? <laughs> Where's the word Bible in the Bible? It's not there. And these are the silly things we argue about. Where is it in the Bible? Where's the word? The word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the truth of the Trinity is in the Bible. I remember one time going into a first grade class when I was early in the ministry, before I got used to working with little tiny tots. And I said, how many gods we got? And the kids said, one. I said, is God the Father God? They said, yes. I said, is, Holy, is Jesus Christ God? They said, yes. I said, is the Holy Spirit God? They said, yes. I said, how many gods we got? They said, three. <laughs> They're not three gods, but one. And that mystery, that mystery, was called the Trinity. A name the church gave it, having once defined it. But there are not three gods, but one. But that wasn't spelled out clearly in the Bible with one word. The church named that truth later on. And so the same thing applies with the Immaculate Conception. The words Immaculate Conception are not in the Bible, but the truth of the Immaculate Conception is in the Bible. And once the church defined it, she named it. So what does it mean, the Immaculate Conception? Genesis 3.15, God, the same God we all believed in, all those Protestant ministers, Baptists, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Seventh-day, all, all those religions, all those denominations, all those who believe in Christ, and even the Jews believe in God, God the Father, the Omnipotent One, the God the Creator. This God, and it's not just Christian, this is for the Jews, it's a Jewish prophecy. It's the Jewish scriptures. God makes a prophecy through Genesis. He just punished the man and the woman, and now he's talking to the devil, serpent. He said, I will, "Who? I, God, will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers." So I made all the ministers open up their Bibles at that passage. And I asked all the ministers there, is this verse prophetic? Everybody say amen. They all said amen. They all agreed, the Baptist, the Lutheran, the Presbyterian, the disciple of Christ, the Church of Christ, the Assembly of God, they all agreed that Genesis 3.15 is prophetic. Prophetic for what? That they will become a Messiah. Prophecy for the one who comes, who will conquer Satan, sin and death, right? The Messiah, the seed. So I said, it's not just about the seed though, is it? And I asked those ministers, I said, when you preach, do you ever preach half a verse? Do you ever get from the pulpit and say, 1 Corinthians 10, one and a half? <laughs> do you ever preach half a verse? I said, no. I said, then how can it be 3.15 and a half? <laughs> it's not Genesis 3.15 and a half. It's Genesis 3.15. In the first part of Genesis 3.15, prophecy. I, God, will put enmity between you, the devil, and the woman. Then it's your seed and hers. The first part of the prophecy is about the mother of the seed. If the seed is Jesus Christ, then who is the mother? It must be his mother Mary. So it's a prophecy about Christ's mother, isn't it? And what is that prophecy about his mother? That God will put enmity between Satan and this woman, not just any woman, the woman, 
the prophetic woman, the woman's prophesied, the woman that will yet come. There will be absolute enmity between the devil and this woman. That means she can never, ever, 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 ever be under the power of Satan. That means she must be sinless. If she had the tiniest speck of sin, she wouldn't have enmity with the devil, would she? See, unfortunately, we don't read the Bible in the original tongues. I don't know how many Bibles you've got at home, but if you open them all up and read them, you'll find different translations, won't you? And as you open them up, it won't say exactly the same thing. See, the only way you really know what the Bible means is to read it in its original tongue. Because many words can't be translated accurately. Because it's not an equivalent word in another language. And so, for example, in Hebrew, the word that they use in Aramaic and Hebrew, and there's no translation for it in English. The nearest we have is enmity. But I, I'll try and describe it to you. You all seen a magnet where you can draw a pin towards it, right? That draws in, it's a drawing in power, it pulls towards, right? It's a magnet. But imagine the power is reversed. Then instead of pulling in, it pushed out. Could the pin ever make contact with that thing? No. Because the pin would chase, it would chase the pin away. There would be never a touch between the pin and this repellent. And the word there is repellent, isn't it? A rep you get that stuff you spray on, repellent, from mosquitoes and gnats, what all those things, insect repellent. It means the insect can't make contact. It repels, it comes near you, whoop! No mosquito is going to touch you, right? Repellent. There's going to be a creature, a woman, that's made with repellency to Satan. That means he can never make contact, even in, in her conception, which means she's immaculate from the very first moment of her existence. That's an immaculate conception. It has nothing at all to do with a generative act. Some people think, oh, it's a way they think Jesus Christ was the Immaculate Conception. So you're getting all mixed up. It has nothing to do with how she was conceived. The best way I can explain that, this hall was designed by an architect. Before one brick was laid upon a brick, he had a conception of it, didn't he? He sat down and he conceived this building. This is the architect's conception, right? It's in his mind before it was built. That's a conception. When you can see something, this picture of Our Lady here, that's the artist's conception. That picture over there about the Sorrowful Mother is the artist's conception. Before it was painted, before it was drawn, before it was made, it was conceived in the mind of the one who conceived it, right? When God conceives, it is. All God has to do is conceive and it exists. So when he conceived this woman, Eve, she existed, didn't she? And so when I asked my, my brothers and sisters on that panel that day was, when God conceived Adam and Eve, don't think it, see, there was no conceiving in the womb. That's where you get hung up. They were the first creatures. God conceived the man, Adam. And the moment he conceived him, he was conceived sinless. Yes or no? They said yes. Therefore, he was immaculately conceived. And when he conceived Adam, Eve, she, he was con she was conceived sinless. So Adam and Eve, they admitted, were immaculately conceived by God. If God did it then, couldn't he do it again? Could God do that again? Of course he could. And that's what's prophesied. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers. God prophesies a new immaculate conception, a new Eve. And I find the most powerful argument for my non-Catholic brothers and sisters is when you quote to them, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the new Adam? Ask any minister, ask any evangelist, ask any fundamentalist, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the new Adam? In Romans it says, just as through the first Adam, the first man, all have died, so through the new Adam, the new man, all have lived, right? So they know that Jesus Christ is the new Adam. I said, then where is your new Eve? 
And that gets to them. Where is there no Eve? And do you know what that is, ladies? There's always more ladies than men at these things. I could never be a woman and be a fundamentalist. Because I'd have to believe this. That a woman got us in this mess. And a man got us out of it. <laughs> You see, she's co-redemptrix. God makes, you know, in the first story, you're going to love this, it's Catholic teaching. In the first story, God makes Adam first, the man, right? Without sin. But he felt sorry for the man. And so he made a woman. And he took the woman from the man, right? First the man, from the sinless man comes a sinless woman, Eve, mother of the living. Now, she, at the tree of life, says no to God. She sins. And she gets the man now to say no. And so they both said no at the tree of life. And comes death. But today in the gospel, at the tree of death, the new Eve and the new Adam say yes, yes, and there's life. See, Christ himself in the second chapter of Matthew uh, second chapter of John, the marriage feast of Cana refers to her as that woman. When she comes as a mediatrix, an intercessor, as an advocate at the marriage feast of Cana and says, son, they have no wine. He says, woman, the woman of Genesis. What is it to thee and to me? He didn't say, what is it to me? What is it to thee and to me, new Eve, new Adam? What is it to us? What is it to thee and to me? The hour has not yet come. And so at the moment of crucifixion, as he hangs on the cross, again he refers to the woman of Genesis. Looking down upon his mother, the new Eve, he says, Woman, the prophesied one, there is your son. Son, there is your mother, the woman. See, it's amazing, isn't it, how it, like it's like a patchwork quilt, like two bookends. The beginning of the Bible, we have the first creation, where God makes two sinless people, a sinless man and a sinless woman. First the man, and from the man, the woman. The woman is the first to sin, and then the man, and the tree of death, and the tree of life comes death. But God does it the other way around in the new creation. And women, you're going to love this. In the first creation, he goofed. He made the man first. In the new creation, he made the woman first. The new Eve. And from the new Eve, he took the new Adam himself. First, she was the one to say yes. So that he could say yes. Her be it done unto me according to thy word became his, not my will, that thine be done. You see, that's the rock foundation of our faith of Mary. She's the new Eve. She's not a goddess. She's just a replacement of the first Eve. A woman, a creature, created by God without sin. And she's your mother. God bless you. Amen. Another hand for Father Kennedy going out. And let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that the words just spoken penetrate deeply into our hearts, that you, who are the Word, continue to lead us. Let what Father Ken said to us stay and minister to us throughout this day. Amen. Holy Spirit.
want to let you know uh, Father Peter Mary Rookie will be coming up right now. And this afternoon, what we are going to do is give away a free trip to Yugoslavia, to Medjugorje, with um, uh, Premier Travels. Is that the name? Premier <laughs> Tours with Wayne Weeble. Am I saying that right? Weeble or Weibel? I always do that. Okay. Wayne Weibel will be hosting a trip. We're going to give away one free pilgrimage. Uh, the young people who were at the youth rally last night put their name and address on a, and phone number in this box, and we're going to be drawing that sometime this afternoon, maybe when we get back from our lunch break. So, Okay, uh, Father Peter Mary Rookie is here, and uh, also after he speaks, we're going to have the young people who were not able to receive a blessing come up after the Angelus and receive a blessing from Father Peter Mary. So how about a hand for Father... He comes up. Do we have a handheld mic that we could uh, give to him? There we go. It's coming right down the aisle. I wonder, you've been sitting so long, and uh, maybe you'd like to stand up and uh, do some spiritual exercises with us. Uh, I, I, uh, I didn't get in too many push-ups today. I usually do about three or four hundred a day. And uh, uh, first thing off in the morning, we consecrate ourselves to the Sacred Heart and our blessed, the two hearts, Jesus and Mary. They beat as one for nine months, didn't they? So, can't beat it. Uh, that was a play on words. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, that's part of that prophecy of Simeon, you know. Uh, our lady told uh, the visionaries in uh, Kibeho, Rwanda, where incidentally we were supposed to be this month, but it's all in, in a political mess and all that, so we're not there. But she told these people, uh, especially one visionary, praying on her sorrows would crack the hardest hearts. And uh, that's probably a reflection on Simeon's words to her. The sword of pain will pierce your very heart that out of the hearts of many thoughts may be revealed. Prophetic word, deal. Prophetic word. Well, I just... Uh, Follow me. I guess I have to get up here so you can see me. And uh, just take a few uh, stretches here. This reminds me of what this young man did when he came off his uh, stretcher in the Medjugorje there for the 24th of June uh, after being carried up by his companions on a stretcher. <clears throat> First. This will be a song without words, just follow the action. Okay. It looked like those Arante figures in the catacombs. You know, people, people think that's far out to hold your hands, your arms up, but that's the way the Yuri Christians prayed. You see these figures on them. So that's the way they prayed. So it's nothing super duper to hold your hands up.
When you come up, you have to get your uh, spinal cord stretched too. So when you come up, watch me now. After I go down, I go way back and get that old. I'm on a ridge here. Uh, we get way back and get that spinal cord moving. Well, you, <coughs> we do it this way first, and then from the other side. Okay. I'll do it once for you now. Thank you. Okay, I guess we're, uh, that was stretching things. <clears throat> I want to uh, do a little uh, commercial first. If anybody wishes to receive our miracles, uh, every month we send out over a good part of the world. Uh, people ask for these from all over. I don't know how they get on to them, but in any case, um, all it is is uh, one sheet, easy to read, and most three quarters of it are miracles that we glean from the thousands of letters we receive. Uh, and that, uh, I think, is a big lifter upper uh, to use it colloquialism and uh, then we have a little message and uh, then they have the calendar of where the services are going to be the ma healing masses and wherever here or overseas so if you have relatives you know you can uh, uh, clue them in to the healing service uh, all you have to do is leave your name and address there there's no charge so we'll put you on the computers and you uh, receive that every month. <coughs> and then also uh, you have our address that way because I believe we ran out of miracle cards with the address on it. And uh, anybody who wants uh, more of those, they'll just uh, telephone us or write us and we'll send you as many as you want. We put them out in the <coughs> tens of thousands or 25,000 at a shot. We have them also, incidentally, in many languages. We just got them translated into Chinese. And uh, I'm not going to lead you in the miracle prayer in Chinese, however. I, all I know is a few words. <coughs> We are in the Philippines. What a wonderful experience. Any Filipinos here? Come in. Put all the Filipinos stand up, please. Oh, I thought there were more. I thought, very good. The Filipinos in my books. My voice cracks when I see those people. Beautiful people. Even the 600 drug addicts in a prison where we had mass I was in prison three times over there and the last time was 600 drug addicts lots of healing went on there anyway 
great people. It's not like going to Mexico. The miracles out of this world, just tremendous. The blind see, the deaf mutes hear and speak the first time, say the word Jesus and Mary, the first words they speak, and so on. It's, it's just, uh, and, you, and always through our Blessed Mother, because, you know, I'm a termite. I mean a servite. <laughs> and so I'm a servant of, of Our Lady. As the psalmist said thousands of years ago, <clears throat> I am your servant, Lord, the son of your hand made. You have loosed my bonds. That was the word I got in Medjugorje a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, I'm not, the Lord doesn't speak to me except it seems to you. People come up and said and tell me, I saw Our Lady standing behind, behind you at Mass. I saw Our Lord there at Mass. And so I get, see, I'm such a sinner, I get it all secondhand, you know, through the saints like you. <clears throat> Very good. So uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is where uh, we see the great faith of these people. And the Irish now will be going to Ireland in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> And uh, the faith there, in spite of the inroads of Satan in Ireland, also terrible. The president of Ireland, I love her, but she's way out, you know, women, liber, woman, liver, and uh, all of that, you know, attached. She's born in, in New York and married to an Irishman. She's the uh, president of Ireland. Of course, the president over there doesn't mean the same thing as our president. It's more a, an honorary thing. The prime minister, the Tishok, as they call him, uh, is the power, you know. Uh, so, anyway, um, and then the very fact that abortion could be discussed in the doll in Ireland in Holy Ireland, where I lived so many years. Yeah, and uh, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, other uh, terrible questions would even be brought, like divorce, would even be brought up in the doll. That's the government of Ireland, is an indicator of how Satan has gone in even to these, these holy places like Ireland. Well, very good. <clears throat> uh, but Our Lady, uh, will, the great devotion to Mary, uh, will, will, Our Lady will uh, bring this victory again. She will crush the head of Satan, like Judas, cut off the head of Holofernes, the commander and chief of the enemy force, and saved her people. And so Mary will crush it, the head of the serpent again and again. Praise the Lord. Well, let us uh, invoke the Holy Spirit upon us with a little uh, him to the uh, home that you all know uh, <clears throat> we uh, you all know come Holy Ghost so let us just sing that together so that we that I will t tell you what the Lord wants you to hear and that you will be open and receptive to this uh, these few words on Our Lady as uh, co redemptors in action. Come, Holy Ghost, create our blood, and in our hearts, 
sacred liturgy to prepare us for our reflections this morning. We <clears throat> heard the wonderful uh, words about Mary in the sense of Eve, the first Eve, Mary was the second. So the reading is about Eve and her fall. She Incidentally, was not given H. Harry Truman. She was passing the buck on to Satan. The Satan, uh, the serpent, that me, tempted me. And then Adam wasn't Harry Truman either. My Spouse fell, and then I fell, blaming it on Eve. Oh, so uh, Ezekiel, I've been reading Ezekiel these days. He's telling us that the Lord is prompting him to say, No, each one must bear responsibility for his or her actions not the father and mother but every son and daughter must bear the responsibility for their wrongdoing and will be punished according uh, <clears throat> I thought today it's supposed to be talking to you uh, <clears throat> about the uh, my blessed mother and uh, her uh, co-redeeming of us, uh, that's a red flag for many uh, Catholics, especially for us priests. And, oh, thank you. Even a glass of water given in the name of Christ will not go unrewarded. We uh, <clears throat> uh, our theme is titled entitled Mary Co Redemptrix in Action. Well, I thought <clears throat> to put us into the right frame here, we would think on again on that. Uh, theme of Calvary. Calvary <clears throat> reminds us of the first Adam and Eve. They were created perfect and now Jesus, the perfect one, then Mary, the sinless one, uh, coming to the help of all who had fallen through the inroads of Satan and our first parents. This is uh, from the dogmatic constitution on the church of the Second Vatican Council. <clears throat> the Blessed Virgin was predestined to be the mother of God in the eternal plan for God's becoming God, the word of God coming flesh becoming one of us. <clears throat> By decree of God's providence, 
she was here on earth, the loving mother of our divine Redeemer, the noblest of all his companions, and the humble servant of the Lord. In conceiving Christ, bearing him, nursing him, presenting him in the temple to the Father, sharing her son's passion as he was dying on the cross, by her obedience, her faith, her hope, burning love, she cooperated in a way that was quite unique in the work of the Savior in restoring supernatural life in souls. She is therefore a mother to us in the order of grace. <clears throat> she became a mother in the order of grace by her fiat. That's Latin for let it be done. In Italian, it means Federazione Italica Automobilistica Torino. <laughs> I drove those Fiats in Italy for six years. <laughs> so I am a Fiat man, and that's what I pass on to you. In fact, in our healing services, we always say we must be like Mary and Jesus in giving our total yes to the Lord. As the Holy Father's coat of arms says, it, totus tuus, all yours. Or McDonald's says, we do it all for you. <clears throat> we must give our total yes to the Lord. And it's interesting. You heard me give out a few, the Hail Mary in a few languages today. Well, the Servites sent me to many countries, I lived in many countries, uh, sent there to work, despite the fact that my brother always says, I'm the priest in the family, and the rest of us have to work for a living. <laughs> so anyway, I worked in many countries, and uh, it's interesting uh, that in most of the languages, at least the ones I had to learn or starve to death. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that simple word is of our consent is like it is in English. One syllable. One syllable. Uh, yes. It's not hard to say. Why don't we say it? Yes. Okay. And uh, in... Uh, Portuguese, si. Espanol, si. Italiano, si. And all the German languages, like Danish, Swedish, so the Germanic languages, I should say, Flemish, uh, and Czechoslovakian, and so on. I often ask, talk about the Czechs, do you know what a Czech believe lying in a mortuary is, it's a canceled check. <laughs> so, Czechoslovakian, all of, all of the, uh, <clears throat> all of the Germanic languages, Then I was in the Philippines, and I learned how you say yes in Filipino. Oh! Right? <laughs> and uh, Japanese, see. Si. Oh, wait a minute, I beg your pocketbook. Wait a minute. 
get mixed up here. Hi. That's Japanese for yes. So one syllable. So I can say, even if I'm dying of emphysema, can't get, I can certainly squeeze out yes, see, yeah, or something. I, it doesn't take a lot of breath to give our yes, but in, and that's where our healing comes. Just as Mary said her fiat, her yes, so in our blessed Lord too, his yes was not my will, thine be done in the garden. Yes. Sweat became like drops of blood trickling down upon the ground. That's how much that yes cost him. It does cost us that much, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, their yes is what brought them the peace. And if we have the peace of Christ, we can stand anything. We can even stand under the cross with Mary. She was at peace. So, we mustn't fall for great temptation in that I'm sure she was uh, subjected to as well because she was human of saying why why are you crucifying my son he only did was heal their sick preach the good news raise their dead why if she had said that let that be her one syllable word she would never have had peace she never looked back from that fiat. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to me, as you say. And that was what sustained her. I don't understand the mystery, Lord, but I accept it, knowing that for those who love God, Everything works unto good. Even evil, my crucifying Jesus. If he hadn't been crucified, where would we be? Still in the clutches of Satan. So God brought out of that terrible evil our salvation, the good, the great good, opening heaven to us again. Well, to get back to the Vatican II, and so, in her maternal love, Mary cares for the brothers and sisters of her son as they journey on earth in the midst of dangers and hardships until they are brought safely home to the happiness of heaven. The Blessed Virgin is thus invoked in the church under the titles of Advocate, Auxiliatrix, and Jutrix, and Mediatrix. These titles must not, however, be understood as in any way detracting from or adding to the dignity and effectiveness of Christ. One mediator. That's the problem that some of our un-Catholic Christians have. You venerate Mary. There's only one mediator. Oh yes. But Jesus shares his mediatorship 
just as God shares his crea creation with us. He never creates without us, although he could. And so Jesus has come to us through our parents, through our friends that come into our life, through our family, through our church leaders. That's the way, because as the scholastic theologians were fond of saying, nihil in intertu, but non prius in sensu. There's nothing in our intellect that doesn't first come through our senses. Well, that's what happened to Mary and Joseph Caesar in the birth of our Lord. Caesar Augustus declared a census and the whole world. So when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, they came to their senses. <laughs> So there's nothing in our intellect that doesn't first come through our senses. You have to smell it, hear it, see it, touch. We have to be touched or whatever. <clears throat> uh, so uh, and that's the way God made us. So if God wants to come to us, he has to come to us through something we can smell. Anybody perceive a fragrance of flowers here today? Anybody perceive fragrance of flowers? Oh, a few of us. That's beautiful. Invariably, in our healing services, people perceive the wonderful fragrance of sound of roses or flowers, a sign of the presence of the Lord. By contrast, <clears throat> when we have somebody that needs exorcism, the odor is terrible. So uh, anyway, that's why Jesus comes to us through even, he has to even use a rookie priest sometimes to uh, uh, bring healing. Uh, and that's what James said in his epistle. Anyone sick among you, he gives us directions, you know, in, in his letter. Anyone sick among you, let them bring in the elders of the church. And I'm not an elder by now. I'll never make it. <clears throat> and they will lay their hands upon them and anoint them with oil. And they will recover. So that's why the Lord gives us ourselves so that he can come to us through ourselves if we are open to that. So <clears throat> no creature can ever be classed as an equal with the incarnate word the Redeemer. But just as the priesthood of Christ is shared in various ways by his ministers and his faithful people, and as the goodness of God, one though that goodness is, in different ways really shared with creatures, so the unique mediation of Christ does not exclude but brings about a variety of shared cooperation deriving from the one unique source. The church, I'm still quoting from Vatican II, the church does not hesitate to acknowledge this kind of subordinate role in the person of Mary. The church has continuous experience of its effects. And that's I think what prompted our leaders for this conference 
who gets this <clears throat> title, Mary Co-Redemptrix in Action. The church does not hesitate to acknowledge this kind of subordinate rule, role in the person of Mary. The church has continuous experience of the effects of her role as co-redemptrix. If you don't believe that, just read this little missive every month. Thank you. We never lay hands on a person without invoking the powerful intercession of Our Lady and my brother and sister servants of Mary. <clears throat> so I blame everything on her intercession. She, the Lord gave her gave us his mother from the cross just for that. Behold your mother. And uh, our sanctuary in here in Portland, the sanctuary of our sorrowful mother, was erected or begun by Father Ambrose Mary Meyer to keep that before our eyes. Behold your mother. If we're not going to invoke her as our co redemptrix and helper, our excellence of her son Jesus, then we're missing the boat. As I tell my brother Servites who want to go out and do their own thing instead of staying with their community. To me, that's something like marrying a beautiful blonde and never and uh, pray the angels with us and then give a little short fervino. And one time, little roly poly John the 23rd was giving the angelus and there was a lot of him to love, you know. And, Everybody loves him, and uh, even non-Catholics, didn't they? And you can see why. But anyway, uh, he insisted, I remember at this one Angelus time, many people do not add the three glory bees at the end of the Angelus. And he said that is the way it should be put. So he, I've always remembered that. So. I don't know if you have that habit of praying the glory be, one for each of the Trinity, I guess. The little guy, the bishop asked him, what's the Trinity? So he said, three and one, three and one. He said, that doesn't know me much about the Trinity. He said, you're not supposed to know. It's a mystery. I'm going to preface this with a saying, a little short thing that John Paul II just gave up in a, few, a few months ago at the Angelus, April 24th to be exact, spoke briefly to the pilgrims gathered in St. Peter's Square. He spoke of dark forces threatening the family and requested revival of the prayer to St. Michael by Pope Leo in 1884. The words of the Holy Father follow. He's a quote. Although this prayer is no longer recited at the end of Mass, I ask everyone not to forget it and to recite it to obtain help in the battle against forces of darkness and against the spirit of this world. <clears throat> Okay, just for that, after the glory bees, we'll pray St. Michael, okay? You're going to make a Christian out of me yet here. 
but maybe we could stand for this. <clears throat> The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts. Christ thy Son. May known and of us. May us passion and joy. The glory of his resurrection. The same Christ our Lord. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. popular demand, St. Michael, the Archangel, Now I'm going to give you an ancient Servite blessing. It comes from the time, I believe, when uh, the three kings were leaving and G Mary took the child Jesus and blessed them. And it goes like this. May Our Lady bless us with her loving child Jesus. And we answer, Amen. Amen. Thank you. This is the anointed one, Chris, who bears Christ's name. The Christopher is what he's saying. I thought he said embarrassed, and embarrassed is right. Father is now going to come down to the front, and those of you who uh, want to receive a blessing, especially make way for the young people who were at the, at the youth rally last night, and Father will, will begin offering his blessing lineup. This way, we're going to begin again at 1 o'clock. That's in about 52, 52 minutes. I want to remind you of a couple of things. There are brown bag lunches for about a dollar. And the Center for Peace table is outside if you want to pick up information. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm from KBVM. Does anybody here listen to KBVM radio? I do. And I want to let you know... I want to let you know that Bernd Muller, the general manager for KBVM, is right by that door back there, along with Brother Don Chanton. And if you would like to, we would encourage you. This is a little plug. We're right in the middle of our radiothon. We do need your support if you like what we're doing and praying the rosary. So Bernie's going to be available right now for the next probably half an hour or so. And he'll, he even has a cell phone. You can call in your pledge maybe be live on the air. So the table also is right, right out that door to your left. So Bernie Muller's out there. And we'll begin again at uh, 1 o'clock in about 50 minutes. And also in our next segment, we're going to give away the trip to Medjugorje for the youth. We, we usually uh, preface 
the laying on of hands with the saying yes that we've been talking about in the talk with a uh, praying of the so-called miracle prayer so if you'd like to pray that with me please do not uh, take it out of your purse if you happen to have a copy I would like you to just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus as we pray this uh, giving prayer making ourselves totally Jesus and uh, renouncing Satan from our hearts let us keep our eyes on Jesus Lord Jesus I come before you just as I am I am sorry for my sins I repent of my sins please forgive me in your name I forgive all others for what they have done against me I renounce Satan the evil spirits and all their works I give you my entire self Lord Jesus now and forever I invite you into my life Jesus I accept you as my Lord my God and my Savior please heal me change me strengthen me in body soul and spirit come Lord Jesus cover me with your precious blood fill me with your Holy Spirit I love you Lord Jesus I praise you Jesus I thank you Jesus I shall follow you every day of my life now our Blessed Mother Mary mother of sorrows Queen of Peace Queen of our Americas Saint Peregrine the Cancer Saint all you angels and saints please come to my aid amen and amen I'm going to ask you to maybe somebody would lead a decade of the rosary up here during our laying on of hands would you do that Chris and uh, well, let us uh, invoke the Holy Spirit upon us as we begin the laying on we need uh, quite a number of cats oh we have a number okay our father spirit of the living God fall afresh on me spirit of the living God fall afresh on me melt me mold me fill me use me spirit of the living God all afresh on me our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the hearts of hell. Lead all souls to heaven especially those in most need of thy mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you, Jesus, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you, Spirit, I adore you. Lay my life before you, how I love you. Peace is flowing like a healing. 